Hi there, in my last video when I made the flywheel, uh, Anthony Britt or Anthony Britt um, made a comment basically pointing out that I'd got the flywheel and they call it the wrong way around. Um, and thinking about it I thought well you know it's no real problem. Um, but then someone else pointed out that it might be difficult getting that flywheel off once you've tightened up the nut against the collet. So um, it started niggling me and uh, I thought I better, I better address it. So I'll, I'll show you what I did. So some of you might recall that uh, what I did when I made the flywheel is I created this little boss here to actually sit against uh, the actual crankshaft to take the pressure off this bearing. Um, which works okay but the, pr the problem is, as people have pointed out, once you get this collet on, well apart from the flywheel being the wrong way around, <laughs> um, once you get the flywheel on, potentially um, in the future it could be difficult getting it off because when you pull it off it's going to be pulling against the collet and uh, the collet's going to grab. So like I say it's been bugging me a bit. So um, what it should be like is that and the way the collet is designed uh, it's got a little boss on it there which sits against the inner sort of race uh, which is obviously the way it should work but obviously I don't want it to do that because I've not got space there so it'll put too much pressure pressure on that race so what I decided to do is to uh, just make a little collar which goes on there and butts up against that uh, recess on the crankshaft and then I can put the collet on and then I can put the flywheel on the right way around. I'm going to leave that in place, that uh, little boss. It's not doing any harm there. And then just tighten it up like that. So now the jobs are good because the flywheel's the right way around and there's no pressure being put on that bearing. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to have a go at uh, getting the valve timing sorted out. Now, to enable me to get the valve timing right, I think first of all, what I need to do is to establish the uh, ignition timing. So what I've done first of all is having taken the heads off, um, is I've just made a note here against this point here. When I get to the top of this cylinder here. Now, from the drawings, um, I believe that this is cylinder number one and this flywheel turns uh, counterclockwise, so anti-clockwise. So that's top, right, top, dead center. Then we come round and this is left, top, dead center. And I've also established some marks here for the right bottom dead center and another mark here for the left bottom dead center. So having done that, if I turn the flywheel between the um, right top and the left top, I think what I need to do uh, first of all is um, look at the ignition side of things. Now Jerry Howell um, suggests that you treat each cylinder like a separate engine. So that actually means you need two separate ignition systems. So I'm using a couple of these CDI RCXL uh, electronic ignition units. Now, I've used these before on a couple of engines and uh, they work pretty good. And um, what I need to do first of all is establish the north pole on this little magnet there which is going to be inserted into the engine. So to do that I've put it on this test magnet north facing. So I know this end here that's showing is north facing and I've just put a little bit of flat, uh, black 
mark on there, felt tip, just to uh, confirm that. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to put it down there, right way up. Don't want to play. There you go, right way up. I'm not sure you can see that. <laughs> and um, just to confirm that that's right, I'm just going to run this whole centre across it, which needs to be fairly close. Not sure when you hear that, but there's a spark on the spark plug. So I'm happy that that's all set up correctly. So what I need to do is to put that in this little holder here. Once I've done that, I'm going to put it on the engine. I'll show you that once I've, uh, once I've done that. Well, having done this, I realise now that I don't need to establish the ignition initially because um, the magnet's there at the top and if I turn the flywheel one full rev revolution the magnet ends up at the bottom and if I turn it round two revolutions the flywheel ends up at the top so that's fairly irrelevant at this stage so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cover off and uh, I'll uh, put the heads on and uh, then I'll get back to you. What I'm going to do with the heads is, although it doesn't say it in the drawing, or it even suggests that you don't need any um, gaskets, but I've made these little gaskets here. Um, because the, the, the mat, there's very little material where the screw heads go. So I'll just put them on like that. So once I've got the heads on, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so the heads are on with the push rods. And currently, all the lobes are in the lowest position. So having got it to that, um, I've set the tappets, all the tappets, to 3,000 clearance. So what I need to do now is to um, work out my plan in terms of when uh, these valves should be opening and closing. Okay, so the drawing states that the intake opens at top dead centre and um, closes 40 degrees after bottom dead centre. This is based on uh, the view from the valve case end and the exhaust opens 50 degrees after bottom dead centre and closes five degrees after top after bot, after top dead center. So just refreshing my memory in terms of a four stroke engine uh, and how it works uh, of each of the strokes. So it's going to fire around about top dead center. So that'll be the power stroke. So um, the exhaust stroke, the exhaust is going to open fifty degrees before bottom dead center on this power stroke. It's going to remain open and it's going to close five degrees after top dead centre. Now the intake is going to open round about top dead centre, sort of round about that time. And it's going to suck fuel in and it's going to close 40 degrees after bottom dead centre. And then you get the compression stroke. So I need to try and replicate that now on this little engine. So just to repeat this then, so top dead center, firing stroke, and the exhaust is going to open round about there. So I need to switch the engine round. Okay, so see if we can replicate this. So the flywheel is top dead center this cylinder so assuming this is going to be the power stroke we're going to come round and the exhaust should start opening 50 degrees before bottom dead center so that's 50 degrees before bottom dead center 
this is the exhaust port so what we need to do is flick this up turn this round until it's sort of flat not quite, I don't think it needs to go another one So we're saying here, the exhaust should just start opening. So we come round, bottom dead centre, come round. It should start closing round about top dead centre. There, it's just closed. That's pretty much on top dead centre. And what we're saying is, well, it should close five degrees after top dead centre. That's pretty close. Certainly after. And what we're saying is, at top dead centre, the intake needs to be, needs to start opening. So the intake. So. It just needs to start opening like that. So we back off a bit. So we're coming up to top of stroke. Exhaust is closing, closed. Intake's opened. Intake's a bit late there opening, I think. Maybe. So exhaust closed. It's close. It's close. I think we'll have to go with that. So continuing with the cycle. So we're sucking in fuel on the intake. And... just close there and we're saying that the intake should close 40 degrees after bottom dead centre it's pretty close it's on the sort of like 50 degree mark maybe about there yeah maybe 50 a bit difficult with these gears getting it precise um, but it's what it is really isn't it so it's, it's close so what I need to do is to replicate the same thing on uh, this cylinder but I'll do that bit off camera well I think it's pretty close so bear in mind the flywheel goes counterclockwise so we're at top dead centre on the right hand cylinder here. So that's a firing stroke. All valves shut at the moment. Coming round. So the first thing to move there is the exhaust. It just starts to open there. And I've got there 50 degrees before bottom dead centre on the right, which is perfect, that particular one. And we come round again, slowly. What else can we see going on? And up here we've got the exhaust. Again, just opening, hmm, maybe 40 degrees before uh, bottom dead centre on that one. If I make it too early, it's, it is too early, but it's a bit difficult to get a spot on. So coming back around again. Uh, 
we've got this exhaust closing just close there on top dead center and the inlet opening on top dead center can't get any closer than that I don't think and then on this side we're coming up to top dead center exhaust closing inlet opening so I'm reasonably happy with that it's not perfect but I'm not sure I can get it perfect well nothing is ever straightforward is it I mean the simple task of putting a cover on um, <laughs> and uh, this seal is just too big it hasn't stretched I've just got it out of the out of the bag so what I'm gonna have to do is at the top of it it's going to uh, cut it and uh, sort of take a bit off it so it uh, joins up properly once I've done that I'll uh, bolt it onto the cover well having attached the uh, ignition rotor and having a good night's sleep something just didn't look right and uh, I've revisited it and uh, on this engine as I've configured it um, cylinder 2 fires round about I think 270 degrees after cylinder 1 and uh, I've searched around on the internet and actually tried to work out the maths in my head and uh, cylinder 2 should be firing uh, let me see 450 degrees after cylinder 1 has fired after cylinder 2 has fired then the crankshaft rotates um, another 270 degrees and then cylinder 1 fires there's a, an excellent description on the internet uh, it was on a bit of a blog uh, which I'll add to my uh, video description so that might help others so what I need to do is to revisit it and I'll try and explain it a little bit further so the hall sensor housing um, holds the hall sensors at an angle of 135 degrees that's for cylinder 1 that's for cylinder 2 but it actually rota rotates this way now I'd configured the engine incorrectly because I got it sort of rotating this way well, I thought it would but it doesn't um, so straight after c cylinder 1 is firing uh, it only rotates uh, where well you double that 270 degrees um, and then cylinder 2 fires but it shouldn't be it should be cylinder 1 firing then coming round 225 multiplied by 2 because there's half a rotation for a full uh, flywheel rotation and uh, having sort of rotated 450 degrees then cylinder 2 should fire so I'm, I'm just going to have to um, revisit cylinder 2 to make sure I've configured it in that manner. I mean the actual setup of the, the, the valves is the same, it's just that it's, it's out by a little rotation isn't it, if you can call it that. But anyway once I've done it I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Okay so the instructions I got from this blog was basically saying that um, when cylinder 1 is at the top of its stroke on the firing stroke um, cylinder 2 the exhaust should be halfway through its cycle so it's fully open which is spot on um, so that looks okay so then it goes on to say cylinder 2 finishes the exhaust stroke and completes the intake and compression strokes another 360 degrees before firing so if I turn this 360 degrees that's there the 
that's a firing stroke so we come round on cylinder 2 we fire and the exhaust just starts to open there and that's about yeah so that's 50 degrees before the bottom of the uh, stroke which is right and then we come round coming round to the top of the stroke for cylinder 2 and that cylinder exhaust close and intake opens that looks spot on happy with that now just to do a bit of a sanity check on this that's the um, 135 degree angle now the magnet is there so if we're saying that well this is now on top of stroke firing stroke for cylinder number one and the magnet at the top so i should be looking when the magnet gets to this point here where the pen is i should be firing on number on cylinder number two so we rotate it round The inlet it's just closed. Non compression stroke and that's top dead centre firing stroke of cylinder two. So I'm really happy it's pretty much spot on. Well I don't know, when I started on this uh, valve timing I thought I needed to uh, have a day where I was clear headed and I could work it all out. Um, and I knew there was a relationship with it with that ignition rotor but I just couldn't get my head around it but anyway um, having slept on it and found some uh, good guidance on the internet I think I've managed to sort it out um, so uh, hopefully that's the valve timing sorted the ignition isn't far off really it's just a matter of wiring up this plastic cap thing that goes over that rotor uh, so that should be straightforward and um, you know um, carburation I think is, is the main thing to do uh, but I'm just wondering whether or not if, if I do the ignition in, in the next video whether I could hook up just one carburetor that I've got um, leave the spark plug out of one cylinder and just try and run it on one cylinder see how it works and then if that runs, try it on the other cylinder. And that would be a good test really, uh, to make sure that the individual cylinders are working. Uh, anyway, um, I'll have to give that some thought. Uh, but I, I hope you found the video of interest, and I hope to see you later.